What's up guys, this is Bowen Chahan, IFBB Pro Men's Physique Olympian. This is going to be a back and hamstrings workout. I'm nine weeks out from the first show of the season. It's going to be raw, it's going to be heavy and it's going to be intense. Let's get it. Right, so we're going to start off with hyper extensions as warm up before we go on to our main exercise which is the deadlifts. Now hyper extensions help to get the blood flow in your lower back and middle back. So when we go on to the deadlifts it's nice and primed and we don't injure ourselves. So I'll do about maybe two or three sets, about 20-25 reps just to get some blood flow in there and then we'll go on to the deadlifts. Alright guys, so this is the first main exercise which is the deadlifts. Now I'll probably be doing two to three warm up sets uh, before we go on to the walking sets. And that's just to make sure you don't get injured and you have a good pump in your back, the middle, the lower, and the upper back as well. So the reason I'm doing a back and hamstrings workout is because I feel like when you start a back workout with deadlifts, which is the biggest mass builder for thickness of the back, um, it also uses your hamstrings. So why not do it on the same day? Now, I'll be doing few, three exercises of back and then I'll go on to doing more exercises of hamstrings at the end of the workout. We'll start with deadlifts, which is gonna target your hamstrings and back do two exercises of back for lats and middle back and then go on to hamstrings and that way I feel like it's a good way this is one of my workouts and then the next back workout which I do in a, uh, after four days is going to be only machines mostly just targeting the uh, overall details of the back and today's workout is mostly the thickness of the back and uh, and then I have another leg day which is going to be mostly quads based and uh, that's just how I do my splits during my off season I'm still in off season because I'm nine weeks out the prep doesn't start until next week when the prep starts um, I'll avoid doing this and I'll just target Get one muscle group per day and uh, go from there. So deadlifts is a two-part movement. The first half of the movement, you're gonna be using your hamstrings and your legs to push the weight up and the glutes. And then the second half, you're gonna be using your back. So one and then all your back. Back and hamstrings. Hamstrings, back. So I feel like a lot of movement, a lot of people miss out on that and they just think that deadlifts is mostly back and they'll keep their back they won't really sit like a squat. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize, that you gotta sit like a squat in the first half of the movement, and then use your back. How warm that was. Tiring. Whew. So one of the things I'd like to do is uh, drink intra-workout carbs. I am a very, very big believer of intra-workout carbs, and uh, Jack Factory has the best product. They just recently launched Carb Surge, which is, uh, 6040 blend of highly branched cyclic dextrin and P10, which is um, carb 10, which is from P starch. Um, intra workout carbs help with better recovery, gives you more endurance during the workout, especially for somebody like me like, who has a fast metabolism. I need to be sipping on carbs um, during my workout to not feel depleted and flat, which is a big problem for me when I start my prep and the carbs go lower. So I like to do about two scoops intra workout all the way to the prep, all the way to the show. And I feel it really helps with the fullness gives you more energy during the workout and because it doesn't stay in your stomach for too long and empties your uh, stomach at a very, very fast rate, you don't feel that bloated feeling while you're working out. It goes into your stomach, gets absorbed into the muscles and gets thrown into energy. All right, so this is our first, actually second working set. The first one was with three plates, 10 reps and just like shy of failure by one or two reps. This one is gonna be complete failure and then uh, we're gonna put the weight back down. So like if you're doing five plates, the next set is gonna be four, and then the next one is gonna be three plates. So it's gonna be like a little bit pyramid up, pyramid up, and then pyramid down. That's how I like to do my deadlifts, uh, just to make sure that I'm, I'm going heavy and lower rep range. Like I try to target about five to six reps on my biggest working set, which is this one. 
and then uh, go lower. I had a QL injury last year, all year, so this is actually my third week into deadlifting back. Hopefully, my QL still stays intact, even though I'm hammering it so much. But I love deadlifts, and if anybody is wanting a thick back, this is a movement. Deadlifts and T-bar rows is what will give you that thick back. All right, so the second exercise, actually third, uh, second main exercise is gonna be pull-ups. We're gonna be doing four sets until failure. Um, I do about 12 to 15 reps till I hit failure. And as I said, like this is my first back workout and I'll only do three back movements and it's gonna be all compound movements with the exclusion of pull-ups, but then I'm not using any machine. The second back day is a high volume back day. It's gonna be all machines, all hitting back with all the angles, uh, rows, machine rows, pull downs, machine pull downs, pull overs, all of that. Today it's just gonna be simple, basic, old school, bodybuilding style workout. And uh, with pull-ups, I like to go really wide and focus on squeezing your lat, focus on squeezing my lat as much as possible uh, while doing the reps. It's easy to just do, just rep it out. But uh, if you really wanna grow your lats, you're gonna engage the mind-muscle connection and really squeeze, slowly bring it down, explode up, slowly bring it down, keep doing that. So focus on the negatives, especially while doing pull-ups. Because it's a lot easier to engage your biceps than to engage your lats, especially in a movement like pull-ups. So take that into consideration. All right, so the next exercise is the T-bar rows. As I said before, my favorite back thickness exercise is still this NT bar. T bar. Um, the, move, the movement is pretty simple and basic. Everybody knows about it, but a lot of people do it wrong. You don't need, you don't want to be too upright when doing a T bar row. You want to be at an angle, so more like 75 degree, 60 degree angle. And uh, we're going to be doing four sets. First set is going to be like a feeler slash warm up set where we won't hit failure, but still get about 10 to 12 reps. And then the next three sets, we're gonna be hitting complete failure. And the last set, we'll probably be doing a drop set uh, to just completely hammer that middle back and move on to hamstrings. All right, so the next big component is the rest. How much rest to take in between sets? So for me, I usually just like to go by feel. For example, some movements need more rest. For example, deadlifts, I usually take about two to two and a half minutes rest easily, sometimes even three minutes if I'm taking like a, if I'm doing like three to five reps. Uh, for something like pull-ups, I'll not go more than 60 seconds of rest because the movement is not as taxing on the central nervous system, so you don't need as much time to recover. T-bar rows, I'll probably take about 90 seconds until I can start to breathe uh, properly. So that's a good estimate of when to go back into your set, when you can start breathing normally and you feel you have recovered to go hammer that set again. So, depends. Sometimes I'll take 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes. All depends on the movement, how taxed I am, how uh, tired I am. But I like to do my workouts within 90 minutes. For back and leg days, maximum 90 minutes. For chest, shoulder, arms, not more than 75 minutes. That's the most efficient way of training. Because any time after that, you, your cortisol levels are too high and you're not really getting the most bang for your buck when you're walking out in the gym. So you should be in and out, maximum 90 minutes, and the best way is to get in and out in 60 to 75 minutes. All right, so another reason people don't like to do the basic compound lifts like T-bar, barbell, deadlifts, stuff like that. So it's so taxing. It's been a minute since I finished my set. I still can't breathe. It's so taxing, I'm so tired, everything aches. Now you can imagine, you have to do five sets of this, then five sets of barbell rows, five sets of deadlifts, and then five sets of dumbbell rows. How are you gonna feel? So people like to take the easy way out and do machines. Just squeeze the machines and they feel that's gonna build them a back. No, look at any old school bodybuilder, you'll see that they were sticking to the basics and that's why they look the way they did. The dense, thick, mature muscle comes from heavy lifting with the compound exercises, not with machines. You can do it at the end of the workout, but not, your basics have to be the compound movements. Okay, so that was our back workout, three exercises, basic, simple. Now we're gonna move on to hamstrings. Um, we already train hamstrings at deadlifts, but I'm gonna start off with a machine isolation movement, and we're gonna be doing this standing leg curls. This is one of my favorite exercises, so hamstrings, because you can really isolate and squeeze hamstrings before going on to the other movements. And uh, I wanna get a lot of blood in my hamstrings, because right now all I feel is my back. My back is so pumped, 
that I don't even feel my hamstrings. So I need to get that blood back into my hamstrings. And this is what I'm gonna be doing on isolation, move, isolation movement. We're gonna be doing four sets. First set is gonna be like a feeler slash pump set, 12 to 15 reps. And then the next sets, the next three sets is gonna be eight to 10 reps, each leg uh, till failure. And then we're gonna move on to our leg press and uh, lying leg curls and a movement for glutes. So let's get started. Okay, so in this movement, I don't like to go all the way straight because when you go all the way straight and the weight is heavy, you're gonna be placing a lot of stress on the knees and the ligament and tendons in your knees. So I like to avoid that and keep the tension only on my hamstrings. So I'll go all the way up, hold, and go about 70% all the way down, up 70% down, and just keep the stress, constant tension on just my hamstrings. There's no point in doing a full range of motion in this exercise because you're just gonna injure your knees and that's not good because once you in injure your knees, it just never goes away. So, it's all about the squeeze, slow and controlled, hamstrings, hamstrings, hamstrings. That's all I'm gonna be focusing on. <sighs> all right, so as I said, I was gonna do leg press, but there's too many people using leg press and uh, I guess sharing is not caring right now. So, we're gonna be doing this which is a variation of sumo squat. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be targeting your hamstrings and glutes. So because I couldn't do leg press, it's the same thing. If you guys wanna do an exercise and you can't do that, but you don't wanna wait for 10 minutes for somebody to finish, there's always an alternative to um, exercises that target the same muscle group. So usually I would do leg press uh, with feet high on the platform, but because I can't do it today, I'm gonna to be doing these squats, which is also mostly for glutes and hamstrings and doesn't use as much quads. All right, so if you guys are wondering uh, about this machine, I know it's not that common to find this, this machine in a lot of gyms. So it's basically doing like a sumo squat with a dumbbell, wherein uh, you place dumbbell in the middle of your legs and focus on enhancing the glutes. This machine is really beneficial for people who have back issues because the weight is pulling you down, not from your waist down, not, it's not on your back. Any kinds of squats you do, the weight is always on your back. So it places a lot of stress in the back. With this machine, that, there's no pressure on the back and uh, you can go really heavy and really focus on the squeeze in your legs. And that's why I love this machine because uh, when you're depleted after doing all your squats, deadlifts and compound movements, you can really get the benefits of a compound movement on a machine like this. So it's a really good finisher. All right guys, this is our last exercise. I'm gonna be doing a superset of uh, hip abductors and lying leg curls. So we're gonna be using a little bit of glutes here, train the glutes, and then go on to lying leg curls, which is the finisher for our uh, hamstrings. And we're gonna be doing three sets, keep the rep ranges around 12 to 15, hit failure on that. All three sets are working sets to failure, and we'll keep around 60 to 35 seconds rest in between of the supersets. Let's get started. So for every workout, I like to finish it all with a superset. Uh, just, uh, just because in the beginning you are so fresh, um, you're able to give your everything to every single lift and every single set that you do. At the end of the workout, you're fatigued, the muscles are fatigued, you're not gonna be able to push as hard. So it's really good to, you know, just, just do a superset, get that pump, get that blood flow, and just hammer with every single ounce of energy that you have left in your tank. So that's like what I like to do at the end of the workout, no matter what I'm doing. So that's what today, we have this um, web doctors as well as the line leg curls of the superset. Just hammer the hamstrings and uh, glutes and uh, finish it off with a bang. All right guys, so that's a wrap. We finished with back and hamstrings workout. I'm nine weeks out, super excited. This is probably my last back and hamstrings workout, so I, I definitely pushed hard. The deadlifts and T-bar-rows really took a toll. So if you're gonna be doing this workout, make sure you give it your all. Uh, it's intense, it's heavy, it is hard. So this was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the workout and uh, see you guys next time. Take care.